Welcome back, guys. I trust you've been staying safe. Now, this is an update on the case involving the fatal stabbing of the 43-year-old Alberta Obinim and the fatal stabbing of her husband, Pastor Joshua Obinim, all allegedly perpetrated by their own 22-year-old son. Now, if you are not familiar with this case, I already have two videos out on this case. The first talks about what happened prior to the son allegedly unaliving his mom, Alberta Obinim. The second talks about the fact that his dad was also attacked by the son and his dad was on admission in critical condition together with his sister, who is 17 years old, and the fact that his dad would later succumb to his injuries. Now, this video is bringing you preliminary information allegedly as being the reason as to how come this son went on this brutal spree with his knife against his family. Now, according to reports which are yet to be fully confirmed, it is being alleged that there was tension in the home because allegedly this guy whose name has now been given to be Benjamin and having a nickname as Fire Lord was also dealing in some weed that is Indian hemp and his parents found it and they emptied everything into the water closet and flashed it off. Yeah. And that is what set the guy off to the point that he was beefing with his parents and his sister and that on the fateful day, the whole altercation started with his younger sister, who is the 17-year-old who was also attacked and is on critical condition at the hospital. Now, according to preliminary information yet to be confirmed, when the parents heard the chaos in the room between himself and his 17-year-old sister, his mom first went there to check what was going on, only to realize that her 22-year-old son was vehemently on his sister and he had already inflicted a wound with the weapon as a result of his bag of weed which they had emptied into the water closet because obviously his dad is a pastor, his mom is a pastor's wife and they seemed like people who had principles and standards and were trying to mold their children in that line. But per this report, if it is true, it seems that Benjamin was the black sheep of the family per the standards his parents were living by because you wouldn't expect a pastor's kid to be indulging in some of these vices with regards to Indian hemp, whether it's to sell or to use. So definitely there would be an impasse in terms of the peace and tranquility in the family because this son definitely was rebellious against the principles his family were living their lives by in their home in Greater Manchester in the UK. And that is a problem that most families are facing. But I don't think that even in their wildest dreams, Mr. Joshua Obinim and his wife Alberta Obinim would have dreamt that their son would be capable of doing such a thing. Because most parents met out different forms of punishment and deterrence to their children. But no parent at any point in time would even imagine in their wildest thoughts that their children can turn on them with a weapon and inflict wounds on them with the intent of ending them. So you can imagine the shock that Mr. Joshua Obinim and his wife Alberta Obinim would feel and face and have to deal with at the very moment their son was afflicting these injuries on them. 
which would eventually become fatal. So according to these reports, that was how the whole thing started. And when Alberta Obinim went in and saw what her son was doing to his own 17-year-old sister, who is her daughter, she also, per her motherly instincts, tried to rescue her daughter from him. At which point, he also felt he had to go through her to get to his sister. And thus, that resulted in her son afflicting those injuries on her, which would ultimately become fatal. The father, upon hearing the commotion, as the man of the house, also tried to intervene, and this guy had to go through him as well, rendering him also in a critical condition, and now he also ended up succumbing to his injuries, after which this guy didn't stop there. He still pursued his sister. Now, that is an intent that is unflinching and unrelenting. And some people are saying, oh, he had mental health issues per the unconfirmed reports. People are saying he had mental health issues. But I've said this in the first two videos that I don't subscribe to that, especially in cases like this, unless it's proven medically. Of course, any competent court, if they would want to accept this as a defense plea, would require that a qualified medical facility actually confirms that truly the guy had a mental issue or mental health issue because I don't think, well, I could be wrong. I'm no expert, but I don't think it's likely that that was the root cause. But that's what some people are claiming, that this guy has some form of mental health issue. We are talking about the UK. If that is the case, why isn't anybody getting him any help? Unless, of course... Either that was the case and they didn't pay attention to it or that's not the case and people are just trying to pull something out of the hat. But either way, I don't think anything excuses what he did. If you look at the unrelenting nature of his pursuit of his sister to the point that he had to go through his mom, go through his dad and still pursue his sister to the point that they ran outside and he went after her and inflicted more injuries only to be distracted by other people who tried to venture to save his sister whom he would now turn on to and pursue which would enable his sister to have some form of chance to escape and be rescued this is so intense i just don't understand why these things could be happening in 2024 but as somebody will say it seems the world is going crazier but I've said this in the first two videos and I'll say it again. Let us learn the art of the escalating issues. I think it's one crucial thing that most people don't pay attention to. Sometimes a gentle conversation can end something could, that could have ended up being disastrous. Sometimes even the way we reprimand people or reprimand our children can lead to better outcomes and not outcomes like this. I'm not blaming his parents. All I'm saying is, in as much as this has happened, which is unfortunate, let's also learn from it to try and see better ways of achieving the same result so that some of these things do not come up as we go into the future. Because when it comes to some of the people who are patronizing some of these substances, sometimes the way they think about things and appreciate objectivity is totally different. You might think that the approach you are having is relatively objective and expect the person you are meting it out to align only to find out that the person takes it a totally different way. Because for example, just for analysis sake, if it's true that they emptied his bag of weed into the water closet and flashed it away, Imagine he's supposed to sell it and return money to somebody. It means now he's owing. And imagine what can be done to him or what heat he would face on the streets. If it turns out he's owing somebody for a bag of weed, his street credibility in that line of work, some people would prioritize that over their allegiance to their own family. And sometimes it can set off a chain of reaction that is deadly, especially 
if the person's mental way of thinking is completely off balance with objectivity and being principled and respect for human life. These are the things that sometimes begin to become a catalyst for cases like this. If it's true that his bag of weed was flashed, maybe that was the tipping point for him and any other consequence that that brought just sought to incite him and infuriate him further. But then it is still not clear as to what actually set him off on this fateful day of this crime such that he will go on this diabolic spree against his family. Because per the rumored report, it is not his sister who emptied the bag of weed into the toilet. It's, it's reportedly his parents. So if he is that pissed off about it, and if that is going to be the root cause of these actions that he took, which has led to the demise of his parents, then it is expected that on that day he should have rather been having the issues with his parents. He should have started the beef with them and the attack should have started on them, not his sister. But then it rather started on his sister. It is already established by the rumors that he was not on cordial speaking terms with his parents. He was angry at them because of what they had allegedly done with his bag of weed and all. So it's expected then the beef or the actions he took should have started with his parents, not his sister. Unless, of course, his sister might have said something or done something in relation to that issue he's already pissed off about and it set him off. But either way, it's unfortunate. It's unfortunate. I'm still researching on this case. As and when further updates are out, I'll bring them out and I'll let you know. But as I always say, let's learn the art of de-escalation. It's very important. I think it's one of the things that people overlook. Sometimes just a gentle sorry, a, 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 an understanding way of approaching issues can just de-escalate something that would have become tenuous and probably even deadly. Let's learn to look at people for who they are in their uniqueness and tailor a unique way of dealing with them when tensions are arising. Don't think everybody is as understandable as you. Know people for who they are and deal with them accordingly. RIP to Alberta Obinim and her husband, Mr. Joshua Obinim. I'm hoping that the 17 year old sister will survive. My family goes out to all the families and loved ones of these people and I would advise that please, if you happen to watch this video or any other videos, kindly learn from it to guide your life. These are not fictional stories. They are true stories happening to real people like you and I. That's why it's called true crime. Learn from it. Share the videos with your families and loved ones so they also learn and see how they can navigate through life because now more than ever, there's so much tension in the world. People have so many different contrarian thinking and philosophies shaping their actions and beliefs. It's very critical to appreciate what is going on out there so you can know how to best navigate life with people. Subscribe to the channel if you are yet to do so. Turn on the post notifications, leave a comment, and I'll catch you on the next one.